Greetings and welcome to TikTok Live. <laughs> Bloom from within love. I go by Bloomy. And this is just going to be a mini discussion for those of you who are interested in this topic. The title said Ghost Whisperer. Now, I was guided to kind of discuss a topic along the lines of this. I want to say back in the early 2000s, there was this, um, this I don't want to say sitcom, but it was this TV show. It was called Ghost Whisperer, okay? And the girl from I Know What You Did Last Summer, chick, she, um, Jennifer Love Hewitt, she was the leading lady, okay? Now, if you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend that you check it out. It's on Hulu. Um, you may be able to access it like via uh, YouTube or some other platform. Now, uh, Ghost Whisperer, this was about a beautiful young woman that was born with these special gifts. And she, you know, had this ability to talk to the dead. I know this is a very taboo topic, so I'm going to try to neutralize it as much as I can. Um, she, you know, she didn't really like it, you know, and I'm going somewhere, so just bear with me. Hang on, okay? Initially, she did not like that she had this ability to see and talk to those who had passed on, but who had not crossed over. And they would be drawn to her because for whatever reason, she has some kind of a portal to be able to assist them with resolving any unresolved matters that have them in this kind of limbo state and to get them to air quote cross over, right? So now, as I said, she did not like it, you guys. She didn't like it because this young woman went through hell, but as did those that preceded her, okay? She went through hell, you know, she was labeled a weirdo, People judged her. They called her evil. They called her wicked. They called her crazy. They called her everything name under the sun. And she hated it. She just she just wanted to be normal. Right? But it wouldn't let her go. It was like a it was almost like a part of her DNA. And eventually, as she grew up, as she matured in time, she learned to embrace that, that that was something unique about her. And it was a beautiful thing. It wasn't something to be afraid of. It wasn't something to judge. It wasn't something to feel bad about. It was a superpower. And it was something for her to go ahead and embrace. And, you know, her day-to-day -day life was just ironic as hell. You know, she just, she had to live a life of constant in a sense, just constant shit, but she kind of got used to learning how to navigate it in a very elegant way eventually, okay? So some of you might be saying, why, why were you called or led to discuss this? Well, the message was coming to me as I was coming out of my sleep state for many of you, at least those that resonate with Bloom From Within Love and those that I channel for typically with the tarot readings, that many of you are likened to you're not a ghost whisperer but that was just a parallel to your giftings your eccentric nature your eccentric gifts and capabilities your style your way of seeing life and your way of showing up your way of contributing very eccentric very unique but it came with there was a lot of suffrage and pain very similar to that of the ghost whisperer lady um which in the show i think her name was belinda or, or melinda gordon or something like that and so much to like her character many of you because of your uniqueness you were born this way this this is an imprint you've always carried okay you may be an old soul perhaps you may um, have carnated several times you may be a star seed whatever the reason okay you it was already there. It was not something that you went and did Google search, blah, blah, blah. It, this is you. You came with this. It just took time for you to come into it and cultivate it and accept it and grow with it. But again, the initial stages and phases came with a lot of making you challenge, you know, 
yourself like with Belinda in her earlier years she doubted herself um she felt insecure it was so many because people were projecting their beliefs onto her they were projecting their fears onto her they were projecting their perceptions onto her even her own mother now the irony of that show is that Belinda's or Melinda's mother was exactly like her now this is the twist to this story she was exactly like Melinda okay but she hated the gift too but she hated it to such a degree that she decided to shut it down she medicated it she wanted to fit into social norms and social cultures but she was a very miserable woman as a result Melinda eventually found out that her mother had the same gift, but that she just opted out, right? And why Melinda's mother mistreated her, though. Like, her and her mom had such a very weird relationship. Her mom was always making her second-guess herself. Her mom was a very critical, kind of passive-aggressive, though. So it's like it appeared like love, but then it was more her projecting her issues onto Melinda. It was just very, very weird. When Melinda found out that her mom actually knew that Melinda had the gift, Melinda was pissed, of course, because it's like she felt like, well, the mom could have coached her a lot better through all of that you know what i'm saying but she didn't melinda's grandmother was the one that supported her um because her grandmother was the same way so it was like she came from this lineage of people who had these special giftings the grandmother passed away and then melinda's mom eventually you know what i'm saying started to share so the message that I had got for some of you is maybe some of you are in a place to where I don't know where you are on your journey right now. I don't know how early on in the stages you are in terms of accepting your, your uniqueness, your eccentricities, you know, your gifts. But if you resonate with anything that I'm saying, maybe you're a tarot reader. Maybe you're someone very similar to myself. Maybe... You know what I'm saying? You're always looked at as the odd one out. Everybody else in the bloodline, at least in this carnation, you know what I'm saying, does A, B, and C. Looks like this, this, and this. Choose, you know what I'm saying, these paths, believes this way. And maybe you're just like, hmm, the sore thumb, right? Or the one that was bold enough, just like in the dynamic with Ghost Whisperer, she really wasn't the only one. She was the only one bold enough to stand. Okay, the mom cowered out. The grandmother, I think she lived it out until she died or something to that effect. So, you all may be feeling like, okay, is it worth it? I'm getting all of these attacks. Nobody understands me. People are lying. People are gossiping. People are, you know what I'm saying, bullying. People are, you know what I'm saying, you may be feeling like um, all kinds of ways. Anytime somebody starts to shake the mold, it, it stirs the pot. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that the message is for those of you who are truly resonating with this is do not give up on you. You are a force of nature. Do not give up on yourself, on what your heart's highest soul resonance is, is guiding you to do no matter how awkward these phases and stages are because you you are going to it ain't gonna always feel and look like that it's gonna come a sweet spot where you're gonna be so happy just like with melinda's character and the ghost whisperer you're gonna be so happy that you decided to believe in you you're gonna be so happy that you decided to own your weird you're going to be so happy that you decided to create a world on your own terms. Melinda eventually manifested a husband that loved her exactly as she was. Through her college years, she was ridiculed. She was literally ridiculed by those she dated. They dumped her. They cheated on her. They left her. They, you know what I'm saying? All kinds of stuff. 
the funny thing is that later in her life, one of the guys that dumped her died and he came to her to help to cross over. <laughs> Oh my God, that's the irony of that. Like, and in his death, though, now check that out. Because he's he learned some things in his life path after breaking up with her, but then he kind of got a clue. That's what's kind of weird. He caught a clue in his death, and he was all like in love with her while he was dead. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and he didn't want to leave because he kind of wanted to stay with her, and she she had to really help him to resolve his issues and cross over. Um. I digress. The whole point that I'm trying to make is that the, the young woman suffered, you guys. It wasn't always, you know what I'm saying, rainbows and butterflies and confetti in her path. She got fucking ridiculed, okay? She got accused of a whole lot of shit. She got mistreated. She got rejected. She got, you know what I'm saying, projected upon. She, all sorts of stuff. She got bullied, okay? Her heart broken. All sorts of stuff. But as she started to embrace herself more and more, she manifested a husband that loved every weird thing about her. He didn't understand initially, but because his heart was pure and he saw her for who she was, her the, the essence of her soul, not some weird program or some belief or some socialized, medialized template of who you're supposed to be. He saw her and he saw that it was sheer light and that it was beautiful whether he can fully get it or not. And he accepted that. Not only did he accept it, he loved that about her. Okay, I'm saying this to bring encouragement because, you know, TV shows have elements of realness to it, believe it or not. And when, you know, you guys are on these paths and maybe it's not looking like that latter years for Melinda. You're, you may be in these earlier years where it looks like fire and brimstone. It looks like MF is... is you know what I'm saying? Get on your nerves. Or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. When you align to your higher soul resonance and you say yes to that and, and not give up, just like her, you're going to be glad she ended up creating and owning her own business. Very unique woman. Okay? She did not conform to the mode. The mode would have been for her to do like her mom did. Okay? Just be quiet. Shut up. Ignore it been to the social norms of the world and need Prozac because you, you was a happy motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not <laughs> sorry, no disrespect you know, I'm making it funny you know, but I'm, I'm doing this just in a jokingly way again, you know, I have studied I've gone to college and studied um, behavior health, I've studied psychology, I've studied business management, I've also worked in these industries. Not only that, I have raised an autistic son on my own, so I'm certainly sensitive to anybody who's having issues. My point is that Melinda was happy because she chose her soul resonance, honey. It wasn't because her life was perfect. It was because she honored her own soul. She accepted herself. She honored it. No matter what that meant. This is why she was able to manifest the way she was. This is why she was able to be happy. Because she took a licking and kept on, you know, whatever that saying is. You got to take a licking and keep on sticking or kicking or what the fuck. You know what I'm saying? She learned that she had to do that. That everything had a bittersweet. So why not take bittersweet while being in alignment with what your higher soul is really guiding you towards? So she adjusted her life accordingly. And that woman created a world that she was happy to have. A husband that would not let her go for nothing. A husband that loved her to such a degree that when he got shot, when he got hurt in his profession and died and she was on the scene because they all called like everybody or whatever. Or she was there. I can't remember the whole shebang. But he knew like he he died right and and he saw melinda melinda saw him in his his uh spirit form he didn't want to leave his wife 
he went and jumped into another body that was um had got injured but that they were resuscitating now i know this is some strange shit i'm only trying to prove a point here though that even though yeah 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 at first she suffered from a whole lot of pigs in a blanket a whole lot of assholes a whole lot of people you know what i'm saying she she went through that first but because she just stayed on her path she honored her uniqueness she honored her quirk she honored her eccentric nature she honored her high soul resonance she manifested a, a love of a lifetime man a love of a lifetime so if you feel like you're losing things and losing people in the process then it's meant to be lost when you are deciding to do the right thing for you i'm not talking about you know hell gosh I, I know i have a lot of different people come and listen to this stuff it's like you got to take some stuff with some wisdom now you got to use some damn you know i'm saying common sense here i'm not talking about being reckless and fast and loose and 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 not being mindful of things you know what i'm saying and say oh i'm honoring my soul resonance so fuck you i mean i'm not i'm not talking about that's immaturity it, that's probably a narcissist who's even saying something like that because a loving higher vibrational soul resonant individual uh all oh, dang spoilers wait what they say somebody say lol <laughs> um they're not going to you know what i'm saying be going about being fast and loose and reckless with other people's lives either so don't give me that shit you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give me that shit. It's like you still treat people right as you honor your soul resonance. But it's 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 almost like but first, you know, a lot of people want that ending without going through that journey. They want that resolve. They want that result that Miss Melinda got from Ghost Whisperer. Right? But they don't want that journey. She got that resolve because she chose that journey. She got the resolve because she didn't try to take shortcuts. She got the resolve because she didn't try to copycat somebody else's life. She got the resolve because through her pain and sorrow, she decided to honor and cry her tears, all of that. She just lived her life. And then... And, Certainly, Melinda, she didn't seek revenge. She didn't have to. Because it was never about that. It was about her having the life she wanted to have. And creating a life that she wanted to create on her terms. Honoring her own soul. And not allowing the bitterness of the shit that she went through. Because she did. People did treat that, that woman dirty. They did. And it was in their ignorance. It was one of the things that the the one of her ex boyfriends that dumped her because she was weird and was spooked the fuck out because it's like this whole sea shit, you know what I'm saying? Like this is I, I liken this into 3D versus consciously awakened and evolved individuals. That's what I liken it to because he was just 3D, and in the 3D people are very 3D. They're very program based nature. They're 3D. Okay. So they cannot perceive beyond. Just like in the movie The Matrix. If you're the plugged in, unless you are awakening, you can't perceive nothing else. Okay. So those individuals treated her. Somebody said Ghost Whisperer was my favorite show as a child and I never understood why until now. Wow. So I know that whoever said that, that might be for you for sure. Um, so, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, okay. So, like I was saying, y'all, right? I bet y'all like this lady crazy. Um, so, you know, he couldn't get it. Like, so she got her heart broke over and over because like she's According to 3D standard, she was weird. I'm just going to keep it real. According to the 3D standard, it was real. They said, I've never seen it before, but damn, I'm about to. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> you, I think you like it. You got to check it out. Hulu or maybe on YouTube. But anyways, so home chick was weird. So people, you know what I'm saying? She'd be dumped and stuff because she had these giftings. Right? And it was due to their, like I said, ignorance. And when I say ignorance, I'm not even trying to be assaulting. The word ignorant means not in the know. They don't, they cannot conceive of it, right? Just like I don't understand Chinese. So I am ignorant to Chinese because I can't understand. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't know how to perceive it, right? So in their death, a lot of these people came to some understanding though. The very ones that mocked her, ironically enough. <laughs> Ironically enough, the very ones that was gossiping about her, talking about her behind her back, spreading rumors, mistreating her, judging her, right? So that's for a lot of you, okay? It may not be to the full extreme. Somebody said Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, it is, dear Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, she's the leading lady of that show, Ghost Whisperer. Um, yeah, and they may have all the seasons. So you may want to do a binge. You know what I'm saying? When you when you got time, you know, like just like binge out. Like, but with the intent to catch, you know, set that intention. Like, is there any messages in, in this this for me somewhere? It may not be the exact same play out, but if you just look at the symbolism, okay, the metaphors, it's about a person that was very, very odd according to the cultural and social norms that did not fit the mold. She did not. She looked human. She looked, you know what I'm saying? She was a very beautiful woman. So it wasn't her, it had nothing to do with her physical appearance. It had everything to do with home chick was gifted. Home chick has some out of this world, a force of nature kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? That regular Joe Schmoes and 3D M Alphas did not get. Or had demonized based on their cultural belief systems that they had inherited. And not the stories that they had been told. You know what I'm saying? About anybody who does that. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? So people were spooked. It was like she experienced all kinds of stuff. People wanted her to get psych psychiatric help. You know what I'm saying? It was all, it's crazy. And it wasn't even... Can you imagine the torture to somebody that is not ill, but everybody's trying to say they are? Can you imagine that? Like, no, motherfuckers, y'all the ones crazy as fuck. You just, you shut down. You just don't have the same access. I do. Thank you. But, but that's what she had to live through. She had to live through that type of ridicule. Eventually. That changed for her because she was a, a very sweet lady. Like if you watch this show, she was not, she wasn't going around with bullhorns and standing on buildings and you know what I'm saying? She wasn't being weird like that. She was actually functioning very normal. Her function was normal, but she just had the ability when it happened, when they would come to her, because sometimes she would see shit and they, the uh, you know, those that had passed on would just appear and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so she had to learn how to adjust her response because it could happen anytime. But she didn't go about living her day to day life, you know, doing sermons and on top of buildings. And it, it wasn't like that. She didn't even project, you know, how do I say? She, okay. She knew who she was, right? But she didn't feel the incessant need to go about telling everybody else how they just need you know what I'm saying to open their eyes or whatever like she just accepted that that's who they were and that's who she was and those who wanted her help would seek it period the end she did not waste any time trying to convince my fuckers you know what I'm saying the only time that she <laughs> The only time that she would go the extra mile, I'll be honest, according to the shows, I saw the whole series, okay? The only time that she would go to an extra extent 
when it was an assignment. For an example, like one of the, the people who died that kept coming to her that she was that was seeking her help so it was still something solicited that was seeking her help so they can either resolve an unresolved family matter or of sorts to get them to cross over so she would in that case try in very unique ways to get people to trust her that was very skeptical right but she wasn't bullying though she wasn't doing these things in a bullying or a condescending nature even though that's how she had been treated. She was just like, okay, you know, I'll tell you these things and you don't, you know, and they would get mad and then they'll start crying because eventually they start catching on that. Okay, well, how the fuck she know? Like, okay, some of this stuff she should not be able to know. Why? Why? And it'll flip people out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, wait, somebody said, I'm sorry. Let me check that out. You do readings. I actually do. Uh, this is not a reading. I don't know if you've been on my other lives, but I, I do readings as well. But I felt guided to this discussion for those of you who follow me, for those of you who actually resonate with uh, what I do. And you yourself may be a very unique individual. So I believe that Source, Gaia, your support team, whatever your, your belief system is, is just trying to give you some kind of encouragement. For those that this is for, it ain't for everybody, okay? But it's for whoever it is for to give y'all some encouragement. Like, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't cave like everybody else. Don't just decide, you know what I'm saying? I'll just be regular and normal like Melinda's mother. And she was a miserable bitch, you know what I'm saying? Because she suppressed what was innate inside of her. And she was. You have to watch the show. She was. Melinda was all bubbly and lively because she embraced who she was. It had nothing to do with better, less than, better than. That's all 3D ego-based comparisons. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with one chose, one didn't. Bottom down line. That is the most simplistic way to break that down. Melinda chose to take healing pains and growing pains and, and tears from making the right choices for her higher soul. Her mom chose the suffering for not following her higher soul. Yeah. It's a trip. Somebody said I scrolled here and I heard my exact feelings. Wow. Well, then chances are this is for you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. In the world that we live in in 2021, the socialized, culturalized, medialized, fake-ized. I just made up a word. <laughs> for the eccentric and different, it can feel like a lonely path sometimes when you want to embrace that part of you. But I'm encouraged, you know, I see the beauty in it. You become almost like a superhero, superpower. You get very strong. You become strong because it's because you stop, you stop bending and contorting and you find yourself again. And you realize that all along, you always had source with you. And all along, you are okay. That you don't need to be contorted and, and, and stifled and silenced and fucking drones and shit we all the same we look the same we sound the same we talk the same we think the same we do the same believe the same like you realized that um i'm okay this gives you strength because at the end of the day when we attach ourselves to things as finite like you must be mine forever Pain and suffering is right around the corner. It's, it's literally because people change and they have a right to. People change. They change their mind. They get old. They get this. They go through midlife crises and want to buy motorcycles and shit and buy strippers and whores. You know, and I, no disrespect to any of these people. But I'm just saying, like, you just. 
when we attach, then we attach our happiness to, to people, which is disempowering. But when you realize that you're okay, whether they come or go, or whether they stay, that's your power, man. That's power. That's powerful. That's power nobody can take, no matter what the fuck they say. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you, it's power. And it's required to be the eccentric, to have that kind of surety. It's, it's, it's needed. It's not to say we don't, the, the, I'll use Melinda since I'm talking about her show. You know, um, somebody said I went to accept it, but I just can't for some reason. I don't know what I'm missing. Need to watch that show. Somebody said that Marvel show I just started watching and he is so right. Oh, I don't know about the Marvel show. Hmm. But as I was saying, <clears throat> like with Melinda, the Ghost Whisper show that I'm talking about, you know, she still grew. It, it wasn't that she didn't learn, grow, evolve, you know, that she couldn't learn. She learned. She still learned things. She still interacted with everybody, but she just had to learn how to stand on her own. And, and she had to be all right with people not liking her or people, you know what I'm saying? And as she did, that was kind of beautiful. If you watch that show, she started attracting into her life and manifesting with law of attraction, more people that cared about her versus people that just wanted to judge and criticize her. And I believe it's because she was willing to stand in her truth. I believe it's because she was willing to stand in her truth. She was willing to walk away from things. She was willing to accept what it came with being her and as she honored that as time proceeded she started because she was honoring herself now so then she started attracting more and more people that honored her instead of dishonoring herself and thus continuing to attract people that are dishonoring her and when people did show up that dishonored her she knew how to handle it Oh, she knew how to handle it. And then she kept kept it pushing. And that, again, is for many of you. Whatever that means for you, okay? You may not be a tarot reader. You may not be nothing to that extreme. You know what I'm saying? Tarot reader, Reiki masters, or whatever. You may just be different than what's normal around you. Okay, you may just be something different than the family you grew up in. You may just be, you know what I'm saying? You don't want a corporate position. You want, you know what I'm saying? You want to paint. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, like you have to apply it to the way it fits for your story. Okay, you may like tattoos. You may, you know what I'm saying? If you came from a straight lace family, you may be the opposite and, and flip it around as necessary. You may want to be conservative and everybody around you is kind of whimsical. Either way. If it's honoring to your higher soul resonance, then that is the ticket. And you'll know. It takes time because that ego is fighting you. We all have an ego. You know, we got that inner child stuff. But there's a lot of healings that many of you may need to go through. That's the resistance. That's the fight. But deep, 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 deep inside beyond the pain beyond the illusion beyond the traumas beyond the mind fucks the mind fuckery conditioning you know if you can be and do anything and you didn't have to worry about what people thought of you how it's going to look, who feelings is going to hurt. What would that be? What would it be? Good, good girls trying to help others and getting pushed back. How did you come to terms with your gifts to unlock them fully. Hmm. Ooh, y'all. That's 
you know what? I'm going to probably have to do a whole nother live show. And I'll actually probably be on camera for that. To tell you guys my story. It's an interesting one. It's actually much like Melinda. Much like Ghost Whisperer. Probably even a little more bloody. Because I went through some crazy shit knit. Okay. A little bit beyond some 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 jock, you know what I'm saying, dumping me in college. You know what I mean? A little deeper than that. And I fault myself. Everything that I'm saying to you guys, it comes from my own story in a way. It comes from what I had to live. And what I still live, actually. The more that I invested in me, I started deciding to think for myself and let go of the programs that was stuffed into me. The more I did that, the more things got unlocked. The more I did that, the more divine synchronicity started happening where it's like, whoa. And it was a baby step after baby step, step for step. And there was setbacks. There's all kinds of stuff. It's called a journey because we resist ourselves when we are still in these resistant phases. Which is a part of it. Then I invested more and more in me. I got more professional level type energy uh, work done on myself more than once. When everybody was out partying and buying shit and, and turning it up and doing all kinds of shit, I decided, it wasn't that I couldn't, I decided that, hmm, I think I want to go within. I think I want to knit. I think I want to, you know, I went there. It, it may have something to do with my natal chart. Of course, I am an old soul. I have lived many lifetimes. I got that. My life path is a nine. I understand it now. I didn't always. So when people were doing the, their thing, right? Nothing wrong with it. But I just capitalized on a lot of things that a lot of people were just simply fucking off. So no one knew. They didn't know. Somebody said my life path is a seven. They didn't know. They didn't know. The, the motherfuckers was just like... You know, oh, Brandy, you know, they totally underestimated me. But I was doing something. Because I was determined. I was determined, first of all, to heal. Then I was determined to be free. And I was determined to, to learn for myself how to create the kind of life I want, no matter what. That I was going to learn my lessons. That I was going to take ownership. That I was going to uh, give intention to fall in love with myself. To, to screw everything and everybody and every belief that tried to make me feel differently. Like I started coming to that attitude like fuck it all. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like ah. You get there. They call it the dark night of the soul. When you get tired of the bullshit. When you start to realize it's all bullshit. And it's a program. And that you don't have to nothing shit you know what I'm saying when I got when I got righteous indignation within myself <laughs> I was like when I was like you know what I deserve to live a life worth living I am not here to be a drone and I'm not here to be you know what I'm saying nobody's doormat I am not here to be somebody's energetic ba battery that don't want to do the fucking work on their own I am not and I will. You know what I'm saying? Like, you start talking like that to yourself. Like, I did that. What I'm saying to you guys, I did to me. Like, these are the things that... See, somebody says, see, I'm at the point. Yeah. Yeah, I know how. I know that point, boy. Woo! You know what I'm saying? I'm going to send some extra love and light to whoever you are. Some Reiki, some special energy. Because... It's a mixed bag of emotions you start to feel. You know, things are coming up. You're starting to, lights are coming on. It's almost like this anger kicks in because you be like, well, God damn it. I'll be God damn. You be like, you be, you, you, 
when you start seeing shit for what it is for what it is right and it's like okay i'm not a victim i refuse to play that role any further i will take authority and sovereignty over my existence and i will create whatever the fuck i want and i will heal and i will forgive i was starting with myself and i'll forgive them mfs because they is ignorant and i will keep moving forward <laughs> And enjoy every bit of it. Enjoy every bit of it. Even the dark night. And that's what I want to say to whoever said that that's where they're at. The dark night. In the moment of it, you can't see it as nothing pretty. But I can tell you that today, I'm actually happy about every dark night of my soul experience I've had. Because when I'm looking at it now, hindsight 2020, when I'm looking at it, it's like, yeah, you know, but, but that's where I got my Wonder Woman powers at. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's, that's where I found my truth. I was able to get past my own bullshit. That's where I found my truth, not the truth that was stuffed down my throat. That's where I saw it. I saw it in the dark night. I saw it when everybody rejected me. I saw it when they left. I saw it when I saw the true colors of my own blood. I saw it. I found my real truth. I found my superpowers. I found out that I was actually way stronger than I thought. I found out I was way stronger. Somebody said this resonates exactly. Yeah, I found out that I was way stronger than they tried to portray me to be. I didn't know it because I was mind fucked, had been mind fucked my whole life. And in these dark nights, even though I cried, I wailed and cried and cried and wailed. But it wasn't useless. It's a difference. I ran with it. I didn't numb it. I ran with it. I sat with it. Then I decided, I will get to this. I asked source. I asked whoever I just cried it out because at that point I didn't even care anymore when I went through initial dark nights of the soul I didn't even care I said I would let go of everything I think I know I remember saying that I was sitting in a car this is about maybe four three four years ago I was sitting in a car and I was sick and tired and I said I am willing universe heard that I said <laughs> I said I am willing to let go of all of it, to find my truth, to find my peace, to find the core. I'll let it go all of it. I don't care if I was told this since I was before I was born. I'll let it go. I'll let it go. I'll let it go. I remember saying that. And boy, after that, y'all, I'll tell you what. <laughs> The rose-colored glasses came off good and for sure then, I tell you that. <laughs> and it was a bumpy ride because it says my reaction has been to numb. But, oh, well, let me add this. That's a normal initial part of the, the phases of that. Like, for an example, the numbing, like, stage one, most people will either, like, because they're, like, overwhelmed by it, They'll just go like, okay, like try to avoid their feelings, which is a form of numbing, you know, depending on how devastating it is, you know, you wild out, but it's normal to go through that initially. You'll do that probably for a hot minute, for a hot minute until your numbing strategies no longer work. And that's when we get to this other place where I call, that's when you know, like it's your hour because it's like, 
Your numbing tactics are no longer working. You try all of your normal same shit and you still, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's when you really get to the, that's the bottom. That's the bottom of the bottom. When you finally catch that your numbing is not even helping you no more. And that's when you go, well, shit, you know, to hell with it then. You know what it's like? Then you go to hell with it, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Then you start going on a different kind of journey. It's it's a very gory journey. It's not all pixies and fairies. At least not at first. Because you got to get unplugged. You got to, ch- there's this challenge, you with you. It's the battle of you and you. Because that hard wire, that belief system you came with, that hard wires, those conditionings, that mind fuckery, it's in there. You, we have to, we have to get it, you know, you got to be unplugged <laughs> like the Matrix. You can't just, you know what I'm saying? That shit, that was your hard wire. If you likened yourself to a computer, that that was your hard wire. You can't just not be that. You, you got to get rid of the old operating system. You got to get new software. You, you know what I'm saying? You got to go through the whole shebang bang. So that you can think and see differently. Right? I know it sounds funny. She somebody says I want the red pill. <laughs> right? Right? It says my initials are bam. We the same girl. Look, telling y'all, I took the red. I took the red pill. <laughs> you know what's funny though? My soul signed up for that precarnation. That's the thing that people don't get. It's like, whatever, it, it, there's no cookie cutted template, but whatever your, your soul contract, some people chose this carnation. Some people chose to have the blue pill, y'all. And we have to accept that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't make people take the red pill either. Right. They, they contract is be the blue pill. You know what I'm saying? For this carnation. <laughs> Maybe next carnation, you know, say they'll they'll do another kind of contract, whatever. But if your soul decided to take the red pill, guess get ready for the ride. You know what I'm saying? I think I came with the damn red pill. I think I had the red pill when I was in my mother's womb. And I think that's why I was treated the way I was. Just keeping it 100. It's called star seed. I was a fucking star seed. Yeah. Y'all got to Google that too. So. Yeah. You go through these bumpy. You know. You got to get deprogrammed. You got to get cleansed. You got to deal with the traumas. And the, the shiznit. It's all right. But be gentle with yourself. Okay. Whoever this is for. Don't. You've probably survived so much. Don't be yet another person beating up on you, okay? Don't be another. You got enough MFs scrutinizing you all day long like it's they paid job, okay? <laughs> wait, somebody says, wait, what they say? I probably did too, LL, no wonder we resonate. Star C, C, I'm telling y'all what I know. I'm telling you. Phew. All I can say, I'll go, phew, right? But don't, come on, like, don't beat up yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't challenge yourself and, 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 you know, you know where you are, right? But there's enough harsh energies out there that's probably constantly assaulting you in some way, even if it's with a smile. Those slight, under the cuff, subliminal innuendos at your expense. Yeah. Oh, I'm just worried and concerned. No, the fuck you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not. You left me for dead, remember? But see, those are programs. And they have a lot of people convinced under those illusionary programs. Just like Mommy Dearest. I talked about that the other day on my video. There's a lot of Mommy Dearest and Alphas. To the world, it looks like this. But in reality, it's something way different. 
Yeah. It's my story. See, it's not everyone's resonance, you know, so I had to learn, you know, you can't judge other people's and other people's journeys and how they choose to conduct or whatever. But it's in my soul resonance because of the the lifetimes I've lived and what I accumulated in my soul's imprint that it has to be authentic. It has to come more it has to come from more than just research of information. This has to be lived. This has to be heart and soul. It has to be to the bone, not just, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of information that you research online. This has to be <laughs> core experience. That's my resonance for me to care about it, for me to be able to present authentically, for me to be able to channel messages and downloads that I get is through my soul's imprints, my soul's wisdom source, Gaia, my light team. And I got a badass light team. You know what I'm saying? It, through, it has to align. And so you'll, you'll hear passion come out because it ain't dry. It ain't because I went and damn scrolled some shit and tried to make me a speech. You know what I'm saying? It's because it's core, right? I agree with something you went through. Right. No, exactly. Think about any movies that you guys look at. When is a true story to these movies? It'd be feeling like you can almost feel the passion, right? Because it's not just something somebody just read and tried to copycat. That's why I ain't worried about my copycatters. They can do that for a while. It ain't going to go far. Because everybody has a signature. We don't have to copycat nobody, you guys. Yes, we can be similar. We glean off one another. I know I'm all off track here. But there's a difference between learning from one another and we're gleaning. You know, we, we're all doing that, right? But when, when I reference copycat, I'm talking about individuals who refuse to take the time to cultivate their individuality, refuse to take the time to align with their own higher soul, to discover who the fuck they really are, that refuse to tap into their own unique imprint to create from there. Instead of looking for three hours a day of who the hell they can copycat, that's the difference. That is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about how we all glean because that's just the nature of this 3D world. We're all gleaning from one another. But if your whole intent is to simply not have to do the work and just look at some copy and paste shit, your whole, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> really? What are your own mannerisms? What's, what's your swag? What's your, you know what I'm saying? Because you have one. Everybody got one. Take the time to find it out instead of blowing it off on weed and shit and it and potato chips. And you know what I'm saying? Then mad because mad at other people because other people's taking out the time that you don't want to do. I heard a reader that I listen to that I love and adore. She said, I was like, oh shit. You know, I just sat there and I was like listening to her, right? Because even readers, we listen to people. We need to hear too, right? So I was like, oh, shit. She said, um, dang, what was her statement? I was like, well, that, I mean, that just hit home. She was like trying to give us guidance. And she said, listen, you guys, you guys know how to transform. She was like, you know how to transform. You've gone the journey. You know how to do that. Some of these people's in y'all lives, they don't know how to transform or they don't want to transform. So they get jealous and mad at you because you have transformed and they haven't. And they want what you have without doing the transformation. That's what she said. Oh, wait, somebody said, don't we always look at who we relate to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Social media should make you out. You're right. That's what I was saying, dear. You're 100. You're 100% correct. Like, we do get ideas. I mean, because that's the world we're in. You know, I was just simply talking about individuals who just really, it's almost like they're voided or empty. I don't know what to call it. But they'd rather look at somebody that they don't like. Now, check this out, because that's what the lady, the tarot reader, I was listening to what she was saying. They'd rather 
look at someone that they really truly don't even like them, but they can't deny that that person got swag. <laughs> they can't deny that that person's got creativity. They can't deny it. And so it's almost like a love, hate. like they don't like the person, but they want to get the either the attention that that person is getting. You know, you feel me? And so they try to start mimicking the way that person sound. They try to start mimicking the way that person's mannerisms are, the way they the way they do their hands, the way they, you know what I'm saying? And all this kind of stuff is normal when we're seven. You know, you do make believe and you want to play like your mom or whatever. But when you then became an adult and it's time for you to cultivate and find out who you are and develop. Not to mention you're doing this on somebody that you feel like is a threat or competition. See, these are the roots and the motives behind the stuff that I'm talking about. Versus like like the lady I'm telling y'all about. I was listening to a tarot reader. I'm not threatened by her. I, I learned, you know what I'm saying? Shoes. You know what I'm saying? I listened to what she had to say. And I'm not trying to make my channel like theirs. Because I watched her. You see the, <laughs> You see what I'm trying to say? Like, I, I, I got inspired by her. She showed something to me. I learned. But my goal or my intent is not to... You know what I'm saying? Okay, look at that and then go make you one like hers. Or I'm not looking at her knowing full well that I I got spite in my heart towards her or some shit. And then, but yet I'm looking at her shit. And then I'm just going to try to go make me one. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. That stuff is for the birds. That's 3D. That's fear ego based energy. That's a total matrix template right there all day. We deserve better than that. We're all unique beings. We're all beautiful, unique, and came with all sorts of goodies. You know what I'm saying? If we want to do the journeying to properly cultivate it and bring it in. But it's everybody has a free will. That's a part of being a divine being. You still have a free will. Can nobody make you nothing? For an example, and I'm about to wrap it up here. Case in point. You all hear me every so often when I'm doing tarot readings. And if something comes up like soulmates or twin flames. In readings. That shit can be canceled. And I, I feel like these things have to be said for individual that individuals that are obsessed with these labels and are misguided about it. As divine infinite beings, everybody has a free will to decide to journey and do the healing transformative work and ascension work or not, whether they are a soulmate or a twin flame. If they in their free will opt out and choose to stay locked into the karmic grid, the karmic template, the fear ego based energy, contract null and void. If you, on the other hand, learn your lessons and why in which you signed up for it, you get to veto that contract. You don't sit around waiting your life and shit for no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You, that's not the ticket. I heard another tarot reader said, don't do that because when you stagnate your life for somebody, you're attaching yourself energetically to their karmic lessons. I was like, well, blow me down. I was like, well, shit, you ain't got to say nothing else to me. I bet you this. I bet you I let go all my karmics. Uh, bet you. I bet. Bet. I was like, I started laughing. I was like, I bet you this. I bet you, I bet you I cut all of it off. You know what I'm saying? If individuals, <laughs> if they are exhibiting toxic karmic behavior and they are exhibiting absolute refusal to ascend, heal and change and transform and amend, cut the fuck off period sounds cold but it it's for a greater cause hear me out you ain't got no time i ain't got no time to be attached to nobody else's damn karmic lessons 
I don't have no time to be allowing myself to be dishonored by people who want to be karmic. I don't have time for that. We don't do people a favor by doing that. We only foster and reinforce their toxicity. That's all we're doing. We're not helping them. Yeah, that's something to chew on for a little bit, isn't it? This is it always are deleted. I'm not sure what that is. Somebody said very true. Um okay. That's one reason. I don't know if I'm reading this properly, so I could be reading it wrong, but you know, I love social media. I love the I love it the positivity that we're able to utilize it for. All things moderation. Anything can be exploited, you guys. This is something I learned. So there's always a bittersweet. One of the things that I didn't like about a lot of social media platforms was well, first of all, if you're not careful and bound and I'm mean, sorry, careful and grounded and balanced within yourself, you get caught up in the addiction and it's imbalanced and you, you lose the essence of what you're there for truly, right? It starts to become too much about something else, right? That's one of the down jobs I didn't like. I was like, yeah, you know, if we aren't careful, you know, you want to stay true to why you're there and not start to get too caught up in, ooh, the likes, ooh, the followers, ooh, you know, which is a purpose for that, but it needs to be grounded and balanced. I hope that makes sense. Because the truth of the matter is this, the core and the quality of you is always there, whether you got one follower, a thousand followers, or none. Boom. That's that's the way I feel. I ain't gonna lie. Cause see, I was doing this stuff when there was none at all. Zero, zilch, nada. Okay. Out of the sheerness of my soul. Where you know, and we have to get there because that's gonna be fickle, y'all. It's gonna be up and down. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that follow you today. They don't follow you tomorrow, okay? You're going to have, you know what I'm saying, your cyber stalkers and bullies. You're going to have it all. So you can't really predicate the essence of who you are and what you're doing on that in totality. I don't. Screw that. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm like, no. 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 If it's still in alignment with my soul's resonance, my higher soul, then whether I get a comment or a like or a view or not, I feel good within myself. I promise you this. I promise. The proof is if somebody were to go to my YouTube channel and look through all of those videos, it never changes. Whether there is one view, zero views, 2,000 views. It's like, because, no, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry. It's like, no, this is why, you know, if we, oh my gosh, let me shut up so I can get off of this thing. Because this is why we can't be making up our mind and stuff. Because we be too much on that. Oh, maybe it ain't worth it because, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you just got to build the momentum. Maybe the universe is testing you to see, do you believe in yourself? Or are you waiting for somebody to come and co-sign you? Do you believe in yourself? Or are you waiting for Joe Schmo to come and validate you? Do you believe? Do you? Do you believe? With my social media... Somebody said, wow, I needed to hear that. <laughs> yeah. You know, because if it's always predicated on Joe Shamo, you know what I'm saying? And we change our mind every time, every single time. Some people aren't going to get us. Some people aren't going to resonate with us. That's a part of the journey. And that's equally okay. 
on my social media platform, I, I it depends on how I feel guided in any given moment, quite honestly, because there are days where I'm not going to tolerate ignorance and I will take down any ignorance. I'll take it down with a hot potato second. I'll take it down because I am the creator. And this is where I feel like people need to grow up, but you know, they ain't got to get your own damn platform and say what the fuck you want to say. On you. you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. That is, that's my belief. I feel like Spend your time saying whatever the hell you want to say on your platform, okay? If you don't like somebody's stuff or who they are, you know what I'm saying? Why the fuck are you there? Like that to me, that's just, I don't know. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm 45 years old, so I've lived a while. <laughs> Plus, I'm an old soul, so I don't understand the psychology of a lot of individuals. Why are you there? Spend your time on something you like. Why are you there? When I click on things that I don't like, let's say I'm I'm randomly doing something and I, I'm, I look at it. If I don't like it, guess what? I actually just kind of click off of the shit. You know. <laughs> it's like, I don't have to invest in that. I don't. If it's not resonating with my soul or if it's not according to my beliefs and you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I could create my own platform and say my sayings then shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to sit there and listen to some, some I don't like. And then I, well, let me tell them I don't like it. And they wonder why they're miserable fucks because you're spending your whole time cyber stalking and bullying people. Instead of investing in positivity and investing or creating, a, you know, a voice for yourself in a positive way. Hey, the same way that they created the channel for what they're doing, you can do the very same thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I have more fun with myself being home and people don't get that. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes you just don't, you know, I'm all about socializing and I've been socializing a little bit more lately. And But how I'm doing it now is kind of like by my soul's resonance. So like I'm really starting to engage and pay attention to my energy. So like for an example, if somebody is around me or they come up to me and they're trying to engage, like I'm really starting to pick up on that. And if it feels like it's, been some, it's weird or whatever, I'll be polite. I'll just be like, okay, you know, it's my nice day. You know what I'm saying? I'm going about my business. And then when I feel like it's a pleasant environment or like that person has a pleasant energy about them or I feel like, it, you know, it's a pleasant intent, you know, there, then I'll engage a little bit longer. I'll kind of open up a little bit more. That's what I've been doing lately. It's like, okay, don't, don't become a permanent recluse, you know, like recluse for a season. But, you know, when you get your strength back, when you, when you get clear and solid in yourself and learn how to follow that internal guidance system, then it's like, okay, you can engage. And I had to learn how to start practicing boundaries. And these things were very awkward for me at first. So for an example, I want to say like two weeks ago, right? Um, I'm all over the place. Two weeks ago, this very nice, you know, gentleman, you know, oh, it was longer than two weeks ago. My bad. Oopsie. It was like 4th of July. Okay. So it was this fireworks show going off, whatever. And then um, this very nice gentleman, you know, walked on the side. was like, hey, you know, started chit chat. And my alarms went up. <laughs> fucking wonder woman man it's like what the fuck he want why are you here you know what i'm saying <laughs> like at first right i ain't playing games with nobody heads getting cut off left and right right but so i was able to like gauge i was like chill brandy the man you know just he's just trying to make a polite conversation right so i went with it i was like okay i don't feel icky or anything i don't feel like he about that bullshit or his energy doesn't seem off so i'll just see what happens 
So I allow myself to open up and just be my normal bubbly self and chit chat. And it actually turned out to be a very pleasant conversation. I think we talked maybe, maybe about 30 minutes and, you know, and it, it had a good energy. I didn't feel no alerts dinging off all over the place or whatever. And, but that was it. Now, towards the end, now this is where I had to put get some strength to reinforce something because towards the end he wanted to give me a hug and I didn't want a hug (laughs) I didn't want a hug you guys but it wasn't it wasn't like just for COVID you know reasons I just I realized that my energy is precious And that I have spent so much time cultivating and taking the time daily in my life to cultivate a certain energy about me. And that it's priceless. People put all their, you know what I'm saying, quality in dollars. But it's like, yeah, but your energy fucked up. Energy is priceless. You know what I'm saying? A person's spirit, their soul, you know what I'm saying? And what they're investing in, that's, that's priceless. And so I don't want everybody touching me. Because that's a privilege to me. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry if it sounds stuck up or you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But all I know is that if I have a, my soul's resonance is I don't want you touching me. Like just because we talking. Because I feel like it's about boundaries. Like people feel entitled. It's like no. My personal space. Maybe I'm not com- comfortable with you. I don't know you. Maybe I won't. You know. <laughs> but I can be pleasant. Like I was pleasant. We had fun conversation and everything. As a healer, I have to be not careful, but mindful in a sense like healing energy exudes a lot. And if you're practicing this on a regular and you are supremely aligned to this kind of stuff, people can sense that about you even if they don't know what that is that they're sensing. So they'll feel drawn to want to touch you. They'll feel drawn to want to look at your eyes. If you, your energy channels through your eyes, all kinds of stuff. And I had to start to honor my own gift in me, honor what I have cultivated and aligned with realizing that just because people are drawn to it, don't, don't mean they get to have access to it. Just because I want a million dollars don't mean I get to go steal it out of the bank. I want it. You know what I'm saying? I feel Jerome to the million dollars. <laughs> but it don't mean automatic access though. It don't. And I have to this is a this is a part of my journey of understanding my my worth. Understanding like know who you are, Wonder Woman. Know who you are. You don't have to be arrogant. It's not about feeling superior. It's about just honoring that. Look, while y'all out drinking and partying and running the street, some other people over here, you know what I'm saying, getting Reiki sessions, clearing their energy, taking goddess baths, studying, meditating. So don't be mad at me because I want to highly honor and regard my energy. Huh. Yeah, yeah. We have to liken this stuff to, you know, people so 3D. You have to liken this stuff to people who spend years and years in college to get these high-powered jobs and positions they work blood, sweat, and tears for. They ain't trying to be fast and loose with that, are they? They're, They're not. Why? Because they paid the price. And I feel the same way about my energy. I feel the same way about access to me once upon a time I didn't but I had to learn not everyone deserves that not everybody is getting past the security clearance okay you know what I'm saying and it's that's just the way it is it's the way it is no Everybody want to feel better hell why the hell not why wouldn't you want to get around a hill and show the show the fuck yes you do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't mean you're going to honor the healer, though, if you all fucked up. It's up to the healer to discern the difference between authentic seekers and her own resonance. And if it's something that she needs to concern herself with or not. 
Yeah. Exactly. But that takes discipline. It takes the boundaries. It takes... You got to start practicing that. Especially if you are like an over-giver, over-empath, people-pleaser. You know what I'm saying? Inner child wounds from a childhood trauma and being abused and abandoned and rejected. So you have to learn like I deserve my peace, my love, my boundary, my individuality. I don't have to talk to people if I don't want to talk to people. I don't have to let them touch me if I don't want them touching me. And I'm not going to fucking feel bad about it. Period. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to let y'all go. Hopefully tonight, because I know I didn't come on last night. I had things to do. But hopefully, hopefully tonight, I'll be able to come on to do the Karma Busting Mantra. If not, I did have some ideas because basically you guys could go onto the YouTube and replay the lives over there if you wanted to. So if you're interested in those karma busting mantra practices we've been doing, all you would really have to do is just go over there and click on one of those videos pretty much. And you can sit there and, you know, do the, you know, through Renila Kantum if that's what you're interested in. And you can do that for the rest of July to start like busting out that karma. If I'm not able to come on tonight, I hope I am. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm going to let you guys go. Or well, There's only one person here by now. Oh, it says, I go. Don't let go where? Oh, um, if you go to the tick, my TikTok profile under the bio, look for the um, YouTube icon. If you click that icon, it's going to take you directly to the YouTube. The YouTube channel has the live videos that I do here. Okay, so they're uploaded by date. They don't have a title. So if you were interested in looking at some of the other lives that I've done here on TikTok, they're all over there. And if you were interested in doing the karma busting mantra practice, they're also over there. So you would just have to go to the YouTube channel and click through those videos and you can like do the practice whenever you want to do it pretty much. Okay. All right, you guys, I appreciate there's only one person here at this point. A lot of people came in and out, but thank you all for coming, for watching, for listening and hearing this little chit chat about Ghost Whisper, about embracing your uniqueness, your authenticity, your eccentric nature, the rare things about you standing in that. OK, I said a whole lot on this video, went all over the place, but the gist of what this video was about is you standing in your truth, accepting that, understanding it's normal to go through these phases of the ridicule, the gossip, the abuse, people who don't understand you. But as long as you are aligning to your higher soul's resonance to the best of your ability and truly and doing this inner journey and this inner work, the results will pay off and you will be glad that you decided to accept yourself and honor yourself to create a world that you want versus contorting, being fake, and bending yourself to the whelms of others only to end up living a dissatisfied life just to get the temporary approval and acceptance of others. It is not worth it. There's a reason you have your gift. It is to bless your life and to bless those that your soul signed up to be a service for in some shape, form, or fashion, okay? All right, you guys, you're a force of nature. Don't let circumstances and situations and naysayers make you think and feel any differently. Chances are, if they're a naysayer or hater, it's because you are a force of nature. Remember I said that. I sent you guys hugs, love, and kisses, love and light, and namaste.